you. Get your feet off the table. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome. It is Spookfest, and this video is coming out at midnight on Spookfest. After this, though, they'll all come out at noon-ish. <laughs> the same time as the other videos will come out. But I wanted to do this one right at midnight. And, yeah, I'm joined here with Young Colonel and, of course, the lovely Dawn. You guys, you guys, you guys they're not going to hear that. <laughs> How is it going? What if I whisper at you? <laughs> will, it, will it show up? I think that would be what. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I think that would be too. You just talk. Just talk. So, we watched the movie Long Legs. Yeah, for the first episode of Spookfest, we watched Long Legs. Uh, what did everyone think? Let's get uh, Dawn. Yeah. I didn't think it was going to be that scary. <laughs> well, to be honest, like the creepy, it definitely wasn't like a traditional horror movie. It's, 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 it was oh like God. scary, but it was, the entire thing was quite unnerving. Yeah, it was, it's very, like I said, I, I've heard it's like Silent Hill 2, and it was like Silent Hill 2, where it's like, Silent Hill 2 isn't a scary game, mm -hmm. but it's unsettling. Every moment of Silent Hill 2, you're like, this is an unsettling it's game. It's definitely a lot more tense than this was, so though. I didn't feel like this yeah, was yeah, tense. Yeah. Not to like the last scene, really. Yeah. Silent Hill is really tense. I've never watched it. The game. The game. The game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, I don't know, like, any any scene with, like, pyramid head stuff, you just kind of get, like, tense, and it it's scary in a different way than this was. I yeah, thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. But. but it's a video game, so you can't, obviously. But, I mean, it's more yeah. that style of yeah. horror than... It's definitely different than any other horror movies that have come out this year. Well, and for a while. Like, most horror movies yeah. are very... It's not a traditional horror movie, which is no. nice. It's, it's this a, is definitely a horror movie that's going to stick in your mind for a little bit, <laughs> oh too. So. It's, a, it's a welcome change. Uh, so, when I, when, we were ta when I was talking to Phil about this movie, he didn't like that... He, he liked it better where it was just a uh, detective film. Mm -hmm. and a that, serial killer. Yeah, it was just a serial killer. Mm -hmm. And I could see why, but I feel like it would take away from the movie if it wasn't actually, like... Yeah, you know, I actually kind of agree with him on that one a little bit. You you um, liked it better where it wasn't paranormal? Yeah, I liked it better when it, you could relate it to something like Silence of the Lambs. And then, generally for me, with like a Christian background, uh, that stuff is stuff I typically like to avoid. Yeah, <laughs> which, which, I think, which, which I think makes it scarier, though, for you. Yeah, um, no, it makes it feel like something I probably shouldn't be watching. <laughs> That's what it's like. Like, when I was watching, I was like, oh, my God, this is so bad. Yeah. <laughs> Especially, like, <he's, laughs> I don't even want to say what some of the stuff he's saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, he says some, like, pretty, like, yeah, it's out there. Like, but to be fair, you look at Exorcist and stuff, they say way worse stuff than oh, the first yeah, Exorcist yeah, movie. Especially true. for the time, like... When I first watched The Exorcist, I couldn't believe the stuff that's in that first movie. I watched it now, and I'm like, what the fuck was yeah. I watching? Like, it's, I watched it as Considering a kid. it's from the 70s and stuff, like, it's, it's the first still, Demon Possession movie, and it's still, like, one of the, the best Oh, well, man, yeah. They did something with that movie that, like... Exorcist, sorry? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That I think, like, not a whole ton of uh, movies have been able to replicate, and... Well, because they won't go there. No, they won't go there. And like especially like when it comes to in both both exorcism or the exorcist and, and this movie went there have like a a major theme around young girls mm -hmm. exactly and like an yeah. older the the one older guy yeah mm -hmm. well <laughs> and like I'm talking about like just like because like in in like let's look at paranormal activity that's supposed mm -hmm. to be demons right or is it ghosts uh, it's ghosts okay so that's not as bad I guess but like but in I don't know in a Christian sense but. Both demons and ghosts, demons and ghosts are the same thing. It would be okay. the same thing. Yeah, but like, so you look at like the Exorcist. Mm -hmm. She's spitting up puke at people to like get them off nerve. She's literally using the cross to masturbate mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. stuff like that. You look at the paranormal. I'm gonna knock your dishes over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, okay, that's not a demon. I think Exorcist definitely took a more of a like a shock approach than this one did. It really um, did. Well, because I'm, like this one was yeah, honestly yeah. in the part that unnerved me the most about this too is like. They did their research on what was actually satanic, and they kind of followed through with that. Like, and I was like, <laughs> there's like, that's actually like really messed up. <laughs> so I, neither so. of you guys have watched Exorcist three, right? No, no. Uh, it's a movie that's I Is think that the new one. No, okay. Uh, it's uh, so it's 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 got terrible reviews because it was based off a book mm -hmm. about the Zodiac killer. Some people actually say that the third is like the scariest. It is. It is much scarier. That's and why it's I didn't want to watch it. Also got it's got crazy. So it's got the guy who plays Chucky, who's also from Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. uh, he's in it, and it's a phenomenal acting oh job. God. Like it's um, the Wait, who does he play in Lord of the Rings? Uh, Wormwood. Worm, worm, Green Wormwood. Yeah, that's, him? that's oh, Chucky. Oh, interesting. That's, that's your boy Chucky. Really? Yeah. 
Uh, the guy with no eyebrows. He also plays in Alien Resurrection. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, which I didn't know until the last time I watched it. Yeah. But that's because I didn't know that guy was Chucky uh, until recently. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's in so Exorcist crazy. 3, he plays the, like, guy who's possessed, mm. and there's a scene, and it's unnerving. Oh, you do good at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but he does this thing with his voice where he throws it, and it, like, he's, like, playing both characters at once, and it's okay. fucking phenomenal. Oh, and, like, I was watching with Dallas and Dayton and them, and no one appreciated the scene's <laughs> acting. I was like, this is the best acting in a movie, and they're like, oh. And this, it, especially with that actor, like, he, he is really good at, uh... Just being a general creep. Really? Well, yeah. yeah. Just being himself. <laughs> He's fucking He's Chucky. So it's like, and I, I'm not caught, no shade at the actor at all, but uh, He's pretty good. Like, in in Lord of the Rings, he's just a genuine creep. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I guess in Child's Play, he's not a creep. He's just creepy. Wasn't he like a no, serial he, killer? Yeah, he was. Yeah. He was. He was a serial killer bankrupt. He did everything. Yeah. But he wasn't like being a serial he's killer. A different kind of creepy, like but creepy. yeah. <laughs> well, he, he looks less like it in Child's Play. Cause Child's Play, he's most he's meant to look like a like a Boston criminal. Yeah, like, a thing. Okay. He had like long hair, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah he yeah. still has long hair. <laughs> I know. It's like he's right because uh, there's a Chucky TV series, and he still plays Chucky in that. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And then Tiffany Valentine's played by the girl, the woman that plays Joe's wife from Family Guy. Mm-hmm. She plays wow. in a bunch of stuff. I yeah, she's know. also in uh, a few Adam Sandler movies mm-hmm. and Liar Liar. Uh, but yeah, I, I like the movie. I, th- I I like changes to horror media. I thought for what it was going for, it was fantastic. Oh yeah, yeah. but it, um, it wasn't you. You don't like what because that makes you feel dirty. I don't know. It's not. It's not really feeling dirty. Oh well, yeah, just but like, yeah, I get what you're saying. I generally. It feels wrong. It feels wrong. It like feels... and I don't know. It's uh, as for me, I don't personally dive into that stuff because I believe it's very real, mm-hmm. and. You know, I would always recommend that other people don't, but obviously people who aren't Christians aren't really going to feel They'll the do same way. Do. It's, yeah, it's, it's so. a weird movie because you, like, you want to watch it by yourself because you don't want to show people that you watch that movie, <laughs> but I, it, it's kind of too scary to yeah. watch don't on your own. Watch <laughs> like her, oh, no, I guess you live with someone now. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, I wouldn't want to go home alone after this. Yeah, the part that they qu- in the movie where they quoted Revelations, too, that one hit. I, I like, know, like, when, like, I don't know if I was, like, because I'm not, like, I grew up in a Christian family, like, mm-hmm. and we were strong. Catholic people, mm-hmm. but it, like they, it's never really affected me. But I don't know if I was just like feeling <laughs> what you were feeling. Yeah, you might have just like, got off his energy because I was like, oh my god, like <laughs> I yeah. know that. And it was funny because even during that part, I think like Jesse was cracking jokes and like I was cracking jokes. I'm cracking jokes. jokes. I'm cracking jokes. <laughs> I'm cracking jokes. <laughs> Scott and I are just glued to the TV like holy shit. <laughs> the entire movie, I'm like making jokes and shit. <laughs> Like, there's a scene where she's like, I haven't left it or taken or thrown away anything. I'm like, yeah, I can fucking tell. Like, no, we're just like, okay, like, yeah. It's yeah. scary. No, that's... Yeah, I liked it, well, and not just from, like, a religious bias kind of thing, but, like, I typically liked the more serial killer approach where there was mystery behind him. I, it's not that I also think it's, like, lazy, because it's not really lazy, but it's, like, the first half, it's like, what's the deal with this guy? Mm. And then, second, it, it seemed like all of a sudden you just kind of knew what he was about, and it was satanic. It was satanic. It was so satanic. And it's like, I don't know, like, I I felt like that kind of just ruined a lot of the mystery behind him a little bit. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't um, supposed to be a full mystery movie, right? Yeah, that's. I was kind of hoping it was though, because okay. like I don't know. If if I'm like the closest comparison again is Silence of the Lambs and I thought that was like a masterpiece of well, the movie. Well, Silence, Silence of the Lambs is a top top, top, top notch movie. It's one of the best movies ever made. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Especially I was kind of hoping they would take that approach, and they were. And honestly, any scene with Nicolas Cage in it, oh yeah, it was like great. the oh, best, phenomenal. the best scene. It's, in really, <laughs> to in quote the Simpsons. Every time Nicolas Cage isn't on film, the audience should be asking, <laughs> "Where's Nicolas Cage?" <laughs> We were just like, where yeah. is he? It's like Beetlejuice, too. Every time in Beetlejuice, every time Beetlejuice isn't on screen, you're like, where's Beetlejuice? It kind of brings us to like a different topic, too, and we were talking about this a little bit while watching, but like the, uh, what, like the drastic turnaround of his career is like, oh, yeah, actually oh, really cool. Because, uh, yeah, yeah, Nicolas Cage, because, uh, yeah, he went from like always being in serious movies and like, uh, and not that this is, of course, a serious movie, but... Mm-hmm. He was, like, um, the badass. He always had to be, Yeah, like, what, what is it? Uh, National Treasure and stuff. Yeah, and he was playing he was the, the series. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is Ghost it? Ghost Rider. Con Air. 
Oh, yeah, Although yeah. Con Air is still a fantastic Con Air, movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there is, there is that he, he's trying to play like the action hero. Oh, and, exactly. Uh, and Two Face Two Face. Face off. But then a lot of people kind of like started criticizing him. Like he only plays one role and he, there was like a stigma around him that he actually wasn't that good of an actor. Yeah. In which you watch his old movies and you can kind of see it. Like he really wasn't. <laughs> well, there's that episode. <laughs> but it becomes but, repetitive. It's just mm-hmm. him playing himself. Right. Uh, but in like the last few movies that, uh, he's put out have all been like almost just over the top ridiculous but in a good way and well, it's like and you kind of like enjoy it so it's kind of bringing him back like you're like hell the, yeah Nick so there were some Cage. movies in the 2000s like obviously he's spider nowhere in um the spider-verse movies which mm-hmm. is everybody and apparently he's going to be playing him in the spider nowhere tv show mm-hmm. noir noir thank you um and then there's uh the what, kick ass, he's in kick ass, mm. which I like. That's him right. Kick oh, ass. that was a good one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then uh, I think Color Out of Space is actually pretty old. That one me and you watched. Yeah. Which honestly, you should watch. It's mm. based off of the H.P. Lovecraft novel, the same name. It is a yeah. lot different. Like when I, because I was like, I liked it, but it was like, man, they should have done some stuff from the like, because the book takes place in like the forties or so, on mm-hmm. like an old farmhouse, and the movie takes place in like pretty much modern era, I think. Yeah. And what, what's that movie that the meme came from? Came from the he like his meme where he's making that like weird face, you know? Oh, I think that's Face Off. Is it? Yeah, with okay. the skin, with the like hair. Yeah. Yeah, I think and that's I think off. that was like one of the because that's not the original like criticisms of him. Is like, what is he doing? Well, he's, but, tra- uh, he's try- <laughs> Well, so that a lot. Of, so that's actually he's trying to act like not Jack Nicholson. Uh, who's in that movie? Who's the other face in Face Off? Uh, George Clooney. No. It's, uh... Is it not George No, Clinton? it's the guy from Pulp Fiction that gets shot while he's waiting for Pop-Tarts. Oh, John Travolta? Yeah, it's John Travolta. Oh, that's right. And yeah. he's, so he's trying to act like John Travolta in that scene. Mm-hmm. So it, 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 in context, <laughs> okay. the scene actually makes sense. Because John Travolta's like this weird creep, and he's trying to have sex with Nick Cage's wife. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I think that was, like, where the original, like, it's kind of like, what is he doing? Like, th- this is just weird. Well, he also um, has bad movies. Like, well, it, Ghost and, Rider. And I honestly think <laughs> Face Off was kind of a bad movie. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's one of those retro, okay. like, it was good at the time. I'm, I'm now realizing that I never watched Face Off. No, it was a weird movie, though. You're not really missing out on much. I think the idea was cool, but the execution wasn't. Um, I can see. <laughs> just from listening to it, I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, um. Heck <laughs> yeah so i think the weird thing is like he made that face and he was like way over the top and everyone's like what the hell is this guy doing and then he now it's like every up. movie that he's in he goes over the top like this yeah. one uh he, no he was doing that before though like you watch have you watched uh ghost rider ever yeah he was in that movie yeah, in that mo- yeah. especially the first movie he was kind of normal mm-hmm. the sequel he's a fucking it's like what happened? <laughs> He's like riding the bicycle. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, maybe that's when he started realizing, like, I gotta change it up. Well, there's a whole episode of Community, and uh, so there's it needs a little bit of context behind this. So there's an episode of Community where it's uh, the class is called Who's the Boss, and they're like, we will teach you who the boss is, mm-hmm. and then the teacher comes up with a thing, and then Abed like makes up this whole thing about how he's wrong and gets it right yeah so then later on i think it's like two seasons after they have a thing about nicholas cage good actor or bad and he's like i'm going to teach you that there is no definitive answer to this yeah and then uh, abed's like i can solve this and he ends up going crazy trying to find the answer <laughs> he's like sometimes he has great movies and other times and then he like comes into class starts acting like him. <laughs> oh my god like, that's the best i think the funniest part of uh, the, the original Ghost Riders too is like his original transform, like transformation into Ghost Rider. Oh, so and like the, the my biggest <laughs> criticism of that movie is how awful the CGI is. So that's not my biggest. I'll for let you for, it. for uh, go, like Ghost Rider, because uh, as he's originally turning, he's like starting to go on fire, and yeah. it actually looks really cool, and he's like weird and like kind of going crazy. And they have like the then all of a sudden it's like his head bursts into flames, and it's this awful CG <laughs> yeah. skull, yeah. and you're like. Well, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> it's like, yeah. so, it's like building up so, the in the theme of what you just said, mm-hmm. I think the entire movie is anticlimactic. Every so fight, cool. every fight scene in that movie mm-hmm. is they hit him like three times or something. He chains them or brings them close and penance stares them and they die. <laughs> yeah, and it's like every single fight is that. And I'm like, not gonna give us yeah. one fight scene for like two minutes, especially because before <laughs> Ghost Rider, the other dark movie. Uh, dark action Marvel movie before that was um, 
like Blade. Mm. And Blade was awesome. Mm. Oh, yeah. Blade 1, 2, and even Trinity, which gets a mm-hmm. lot of hate. Yeah. Which it is obviously the weakest. There was definitely issues with those movies, too. Oh, yeah, but I think, for the I time, think, I think they're good. Oh, I think they were awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, like, it's got cool effects. Like, it's all practical shit. But I always found it was kind of awesome in the same way, like, Robocop was awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like, this is kind of just really stupid but, yeah <laughs> but it's it's entertaining but as they don't fuck, do right? that with movies anymore everything everyone's no. all, they're always trying to like make a message and stuff they don't just mm-hmm. make stupid movies anymore although that yeah. one movie that's coming out uh that was like i think this movie's totally for you and it's like about this guy in the 80s who lives in his basement <laughs> and it's like just like it just seems like a dumb movie that mm-hmm. it's not like an action movie or anything it just seems like oh that that saturday night live movie seems good Oh, the Saturday Night Live. It's called uh, movie? Oh my God. Live or something like that. Saturday mm. Night. It's called Saturday Night. Saturday Night. Yeah, but it's about how Saturday Night Live came to be. Oh, really? Yeah. I and heard that's an interesting story, but I didn't. It's a. Uh, IGN that rated looks... it. It's got, it got an 8 yeah. out of 10, which uh, honestly, I don't give a lot of criteria to IGN. But... So, tying back, like we were talking about uh, potentially doing the Evil Dead movies too. And uh, it, like on that topic and on Nicolas Cage, uh, it actually made me think of the movie Mandy, which I wanted jesse and don to watch and we uh i'm hoping we, we can actually do a yeah we can figure out a different for... it's you know in the in the same way that like ash is way over the top in all those movies and it's like amazing is the exact same way nicholas cage acts wow. in mandy and it's like also just kind of a brutal movie <laughs> like <laughs> brutal isn't thing. like it's a. Uh, there's a lot of violence but it's like kind of awesome, and the entire time he is insane. So it's oh my like God. I told Kurt he should watch that entire watching. movie is like an acid trip, just watching it from start to finish. And uh... Uh, there's no way you'll finish Ash vs Evil Dead before we're done Halloween. But mm-hmm. I oh, think you should so start. Good. Like me and Don haven't even started. Fin- I finished it, but mm-hmm. that's literally once I found out it was on Netflix. I watched every single episode. Like I'd watch like ten episodes a day because it was like my favorite mm-hmm. show. But it's nowhere now, right? No, is yeah, it? I have it on Plex. That's how we're watching it. Yeah, that's why I was saying we could watch an episode after this, but I think it'll be too late. Are uh, you still dressing up as them for Halloween? I want to dress up as Ash, <laughs> but we'll see. Get a real chainsaw? Well, no, just a chainsaw like thing. I was thinking because you can get like those chainsaws at Halloween stores. Mm. I was no, gonna hollow it up. You a real one. You <laughs> cut off your head. Cha- cut off your head. <laughs> If it, if it worked as well as it does in, like, the show and movies, I would consider it. Go trick-or-treating and then say trick That's, or which is Which is the craziest thing about Evil Dead is... I know we're talking about Evil Dead now. And we dropped everything else. Yeah, we can just... Yeah, it's a podcast. Go wherever it goes, yeah. Uh, Let's stick around. Ash is portrayed as a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. And he is. Like, it's pretty much shown he's stupid as fuck. Mm-hmm. But he somehow figures out how to strap, not only strap a chainsaw to his hand, but make it work and mm-hmm. everything within seconds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the part of that, I think, is explained that is because he's the chosen one. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, like, when... I know, but that that is also lazy it. writing. Yeah, um, well, it's, it's not... <laughs> it, it was never supposed to be it's, like it's, this. It's the funniest thing about the movies that kind of do that, that thing where it's like there's obviously gaping plot holes... But there's such charm to it that well, you don't really care. It, it, evil and, evil it. Dead is like the king of plot holes. Yeah. And they don't care. They're like, uh, wait, what did Ash vs. Evil Dead say? Well, okay, then just forget about it. It makes <laughs> me think, like, a, and we're going way even further off topic here, but like, you ever watch the the movie Emperor's New Groove? Yeah. yeah. And uh, they're racing back to oh, the yeah. temple. And uh, Kronk and Yzma are like riding the parachute. They get struck by lightning. <laughs> yeah. Fall down into a chasm and uh, Cusco and Pacha make it to the temple. <laughs> yeah. And then they're looking for the vial to turn Cusco back into a human. And Kronk and Yzma are like looking for this. That and, like, and he's like, wait, how did you get here first? And they're like, beats uh, me. Pulls out a graph. By all accounts, it doesn't make any they, sense. They like look at each other. And, like, <laughs> yeah. I Everyone's like <laughs> confused. And it's like, it's so funny because they, they purposely wrote a plot hole into their movie. <laughs> to make a Acknowledged it. And then just didn't go anywhere with it. <laughs> And it's like the best thing I've ever seen. That movie, I, cro- I, I, in my opinion, Emperor's New Groove is one of the best Disney movies. I think oh it is. God, it it so might be good. the best one. You ever heard the story of how like that movie came to be too? Like the no. guy who originally thought of the idea wanted it to be a like traditional Disney princess movie, and uh, it, it just went down in hell. Like they he wrote the story and they were like filming it, and then all of a sudden it's like I can't remember if some like executive bought out the idea or something, and they just like changed everything. And made it like this stupid, goofy comedy movie that like makes no sense. 
And the original writer uh, to this day says, like, I hate that movie. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so funny because it's, so it's like, this is not what I wanted. I didn't want this. Like, I think Cusco's a Disney princess, if you ask me. <laughs> oh, yeah. He totally is. Um, yeah. What's the thing I was going to say about that movie that I love? There's like, well, I love all, almost everything about that movie. Oh, the same, around the same scene, though, mm-hmm. is when they all, all the guards get turned to different animals. And he's like, I'm a cow. Can I go home? <laughs> Your excuse. <Yeah. laughs> Your excuse. Does anyone else need to go? No, no. No. No, no, we're, we're good. good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've just been turned into a cow. May I go home? <laughs> you're, you're, you're like, yeah, that's a valid reason to want to go. <laughs> they're all animals. No, we're good. No, we're good. <laughs> and they, they, they chase them down, and it's like, they go out the nostrils, and it's like, what was it? All, all the guards are like, come on, man, no one lives forever, and they all just jump off. Oh, like, yeah. oh my god, I forgot about that. <laughs> it's like, well, that, that's not good reasoning at all. <laughs> no one lives forever. That, that's like the line in Shrek 2, where he's like, many of you will die, but that's a sacrifice I'm willing, well, willing to make. I'm willing to make. Just a complete oh nonsense god. from start to finish in that movie. It's so good. But I think uh, I, Long Legs was a good... Uh, there's another horror movie that I've heard good things about that came out this year called Cuckoo. Oh, yeah. Which I've heard some good stuff, but that looks like it's more, like less serious writing more dumb horror movie writing but that's fine too mm-hmm. there's also coming out which I'm, I do plan on playing for Spookfest even though it's not one of the ones I advertise because mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I could beat both of them in one day yeah. is that Halloween Evil Dead uh, game bundle <gasps> oh yeah and it's only supposed to be like 30 bucks and it looks good have you seen that there's a, it's a Halloween Evil Dead retro game bundle huh. and it's like a brand new game made huh. by an indie studio and the Halloween one he plays Michael Myers killing people and the Evil Dead one he plays Ash obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's like a platformer, action platformer, kind of like Ghosts and Goblins and stuff. Mm. Uh, but the thing that's interesting about it is if you buy both copies of the game, you can switch characters. So you can play Ash in the Halloween game and you can play Mike oh, Myers in the Evil Dead cool. game. Uh, mm-hmm. And so that's going to be one of the games I'll probably stream, especially because I think I'll be able to beat Castlevania Circle of Aslania mm. sooner than I will mm. need to. It depends how much I do the other stream stuff. Mm. So... Um, question. Uh-huh. You know how um, me and Kurt were talking about, like, how they were actually showing, like, satanic stuff, like, in this movie? Yeah. Have you seen any other movies lately, like, that have had that? Mm. Like, to this extent? Uh, I've seen movies like this, but not yeah. lately. Lately, I'll, the I'll lately sit like... on that, because not, not recently. Right? There has been movies where I have definitely got that, like, mm. That vibe, right? Yeah. Like, I'm, like, right, there is, like, you get that, like, it's, like, an ick feeling for me, mm-hmm. but, like, this was, like, it was really shocking, I was, like, oh, crap, <laughs> like, yeah. that's crazy, like, I don't think Exorcist, I can... right, but... I don't then... think I can get that for Exorcist me. is, like, a movie I actively avoid, though, too, right? for, the, for a similar reason. <laughs> so, Exorcist 3 isn't as bad as far as that goes. That's fair, so... but it is all demons, and, like, yeah. And um... In Exorcist, there was actually people that died on set. Yes. Right? Yeah. To be fair, and same so... with, uh... Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Well, there was... Let's, well, yeah, let's yeah. save that for another podcast because <laughs> right, there was some stuff happening on that. Yeah, Wizard of Oz is really fucked up. It's Exorcist fucked up. Or The Exorcist was based on the demon of Zazel too, which is yeah. a real demon And then, like, the name, well, right? So, yeah. And so, like, they actually messed with stuff and then people died. Mm-hmm. And so this movie's being made and they're actually doing stuff. Like, I wonder if anything happened yeah. on their set, and it's, you know? It, it's I feel actually, like you couldn't hide that in today's studio stuff like i'm sure if something happened we would have known about it like think about that one movie where the guy got shot on set or the woman yeah. got shot on set with the practice gun mm-hmm. and like you knew about that within days i feel like but what if you didn't because of yeah. the demons that's true <laughs> well, and also it, it, hollywood has the money well, it's stuff like that, like the studio um it, it actually ties in the other way too like uh in movies made about like christ mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um very similar things actually end up happening exactly like passion of the christ like exactly. things yeah. that happen in that because there's too um, much like it, it's just very spiritual and i don't yes. know like i i personally believe in it i don't know if like mm-hmm. the active people but like mm-hmm. for me like i see things like this there's a there's one movie it wasn't passion of the christ um or maybe it was but the actor who played jesus and the oh, scene that he's getting whipped oh wait it wasn't mm-hmm. he, was um, he had a metal plate on his yeah. back while they were doing it but the the guy who was whipping him uh, went a little bit too hard and he actually swung the whip around the side yeah. and there was it wasn't just like a whip it was like whip with claws with the claws and the claws actually insane. grabbed his skin and ripped a chunk out of his side which is where 
Christ was actually like mm-hmm. stabbed, you know? Yeah. Like, and so like, uh, there's a ton of things that are going wrong in any sort of movie that has anyone playing the part of Jesus. Exactly. And I think for me, I'm just like, yeah, I mean that, that checks <laughs> out, but <laughs> there's only been a few things that make me feel like, uh, like that I've watched that make me feel like legitimately like weird and mm-hmm. something after like one was a uh, devil man cry baby, which that movie I was I, you were you we were, you were working with me when that movie or when I sorry it wasn't a movie it was an anime mm-hmm. but it was a, like it's a ten episode series on Netflix one off mm-hmm. and uh, you were working with me when I watched that and I, I was very like I was off for a whole week like I was constantly not talking and stuff like and I'm very talkative mm-hmm. and it just after I watched that I was like not what myself was it? it's like what was it about that movie? Uh, so I don't know it's just like how it ended I just did not like it like Dylan watched it and he was fine after. But I watched it and I was like, uh, because I like I expected Chainsaw Man to kind of do something similar, mm-hmm. and then the big scene in Chainsaw Man was nothing compared to that to me. But like, so what happens in Cry- Devil Man Cry Baby is, uh, essentially, um, there's so there's demons obviously, and the uh, one guy's the devil. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's like his friend, and uh, he lets him get control of his demon. Some humans can control the demon and then use its powers for like good. And so essentially, the beginning of the show is. He's in control of this demon ability and able to fight other demons. Mm -hmm. And so it's like kind of like a traditional anime at the beginning. But then around the last two episodes, uh, everyone starts getting affected by demons and they're either able to control it or not. And there's like this one scene where this kid gets a demon that takes control of him and the mom and he keeps telling mom he's hungry and she starts feeding him stuff, but he gets hungry and hungry. So then she feeds himself to the demon and then the dad kids that kills a kid and it gets gets so dark and messed up and then (laughs) people start like not trusting people. And then at the very end, um, the main character's fighting the devil, and the devil wins. Uh, and then the devil starts crying, and that's where the whole show comes from. Because, uh, well, at first you think it's about, like, because the like, main character cries a lot, mm-hmm. and then the devil keeps calling him a crybaby. But at the very end, he kills him, and then he's like, now I'm all alone, and he starts crying, and then uh, God, like, eradicates the planet because yeah. it's, like, possessed with demons. But it's like it was just really dark and unnerving. And there's a scene yeah. where this girl's yeah. like running and she gets like stabbed in the back and it's like really vicious. I was like, ugh. And this it's is also an that anime. Yeah, it's an it's a uh, it's also in this art style um, that I do not like. It's uh it's more classic nine or eighties I guess was when it would have been like drawn like. Maybe it was made like that on purpose. Yeah, no, I think that it was because yeah, because um I, you've never seen Akira, have you? No. It's a anime movie. It's not dark or anything, but it's got the same animation style. And it was the first anime thing I watched that I wasn't Akira like. Akira was a game. It's a, like here's a very common name, so oh, okay. it could it could very well be a game, but it's mm-hmm. a very popular anime. You know the motorcycle scene that you've seen something that does it, where like somebody's on a motorcycle and they start sliding and it goes mm-hmm. shh. Mm-hmm. That's from Akira, and then everyone else just copies it. Oh, interesting. Oh. Um, uh, but yeah, it's a it's a good movie. I recommend that. I do not recommend Devil May Cry, baby. Wow, and then I, again, it has yeah, to do with demons. like I feel like that would be one that would be unnerving for you, and I was mm-hmm. unnerving for me as somebody that doesn't. Yeah. And the other movies I've seen is David Lynch stuff, which is why I want... Which David Lynch's stuff isn't religious. Mm-hmm. They're just... You want... They're weird. They're weird. weird. Uh, like, when me and Dylan watched Eraserhead, you remember? Mm-hmm. Dylan was, like, afterwards, like... He was grossed out. Like, he, mm-hmm. he felt, like, weird. Yeah, like, you, like you feel like off. It, yeah, like, your mm-hmm. skin your feels dirty, weird. Like, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's a different kind of off... Although, Eraserhead like, didn't do that to me because I'd seen so many other David Lynch movies by that point <laughs> that I was like, ah, classic <laughs> Lynchy buoy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Lynch, just, I'm like, I can't... I can't watch those. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're weird think, movies. I think to your early point, earlier point, Don, like, uh, mm-hmm. and it, it's weird because they don't affect me the same way as something like this did, but, uh, yeah, if we're, like, talking about demonic activity in movies, like the traditional, like, Conjuring movies, mm-hmm. they are all based on r- real things yeah, that happen. Yeah, exactly. Um, I always found, like, since they're, they're just, like, mainstream horror movies that they, mm-hmm. I never took them as seriously yeah but i've ended up doing like a lot of looking into uh the actual stories that happened <clears throat> behind them so like the annabelle doll is a is a great example yeah. um even just the conjuring house in the first movie yeah and what happened with uh bathsheba which was mm. a demon but uh and it's it's a for, for what i know like it's a clever trick that demons always play is that they always um act as if they're ghosts yeah like they're Um, like they're the vulnerable ones right they're the vulnerable ones they're the spirit of somebody who was alive and that they're actually a peaceful ghost but i don't believe in ghosts i believe they're all demons and it's like uh and so that's exactly what happened with Bathsheba in the conjuring house is that there was a older lady who lived in that house who Mm -hmm. passed away and the demon 
but this woman is also into like d- demonic activity. Yeah, like she was. She and never so, liked Satan. Yeah, and so like I never really took him as seriously, but the actual stories behind him are really like messed up. Yeah. And uh, there's always like a weird, twisted fascination with that stuff because it's like if I believe in it, it makes it even so, more. It's even <laughs> more uh, I would say so. Like yeah. for me, um, like. Obviously, I'm agnostic, which may, a lot of people always think of as just like a poor man's atheist. Mm-hmm. But I think of it as more like I'm not not religious. Mm-hmm. I like I believe that the potential exists, but mm-hmm. I like to keep my mind open, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. which is also dangerous because I'm definitely like the guy in Evil Dead who reads the book and stuff. Because <laughs> I want mm-hmm. I want to see that stuff happen. Mm-hmm. If I die from a demon ripping me apart, I can die knowing that there's more to this world than just this. <laughs> that is not how you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, like... No, so that sorry. Un, there's a line from an old Super Best Friends video where it's like, um, somebody's like, if I was ever in a ghost fight, I would just kill myself because then I would have unfinished business and then I would go fight the ghost. <laughs> <laughs> ghost, <laughs> now you gotta fight me 1v1, bitch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but uh, there was another funny point I want to make. Not about like what you guys are saying, but mm-hmm. uh, it was kind of related, obviously. But I can't remember, so I'll remember and then Thank- you'll talk and I'll remember it. <laughs> the, only yeah. other, the only other thing, and this is kind of not really on the same topic but somewhat similar is that or is a, is a question that have you guys ever actively experienced something that you thought was demonic in your own life not demonic but all I definitely the time. Ex- all yeah the time? she she sees stuff all so like I feel oh like I don't know why I should say. be saying that on this you can say whatever you want <laughs> well um, if you, if you don't want to mention it that's fine yeah if you don't want to tell the story uh, if you're not ready right now you for, can tell it next time me? I tell you them all the time yeah, yeah no <laughs> i mean but it's something that's getting on the internet you don't yeah. have that's true for me personally, there's been only like a few. Um, the ones that terrify me the most is that I've struggled with sleep paralysis and night terrors, mm-hmm. and that every single time it happens, and I've I've had sleep paralysis like numerous times, but night mm-hmm. terrors I've only ever had two. By night terrors, you mean like when you see stuff in sleep paralysis? You can, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it's mm-hmm. a, you, you like visually see something. You're awake. You can't move. There's something in the room mm-hmm. with you. So I've had one visual, which at the time, I didn't really think too much of it, because it was honestly kind of funny. Mm-hmm. But looking back, I'm like, that actually sucked. <laughs> because what it was is uh, I, I woke up, I was like laying on my side, I couldn't move, and there was a gorilla in the corner of my room. Gorilla? Yep. Okay, thanks. But sure, it wasn't sure. like a normal gorilla. It, it, like, you ever seen the old uh, Brendan Fraser, Georgia the Jungle movies? Yeah, yeah. Where <laughs> you can clearly tell the gorillas are fake. <laughs> yeah, there's... And you can see, like, human eyes behind yeah. it. Yeah, oh my gosh. And there's one of those in the corner of my room, and it slowly, like, started walking up to me uh-huh. and pulled out a feather and started tickling me. <laughs> what? And, like, at the... At the like, at the time I was terrified so I was like just sitting there and all of a sudden it's like tickling me and I'm just like nope 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 I snapped out of it oh got God. up out of bed and just walked out like <laughs> and this was also the time like I was struggling the most with uh like I was working at Domino's like and had, my sleep schedule was awful and I think that ties into it pretty oh, well yeah. but um was I living there yet so uh yeah you were still there mm-hmm. um because I've been dealing with sleep paralysis since I was a teenager yeah so you actually started. even longer and night terrors. You've had night terrors? Oh, yeah. Okay. I get them quite often. <laughs> yeah. So that, for me, it's like, I'm just sold that that's just demons. And I'm like, it's messed up. And there's actually like a podcast I've been listening to about it that uh, pretty much talks about like a lot of people's uh, experiences, experiences with. Experiences. And a lot of the people who have had it, like uh, uh, like documented. Sorry, um, I just want to interrupt for you mm-hmm. quick. Just for a second. Just remember, Amityville Horror is the thing I want to talk about. Yeah, yeah, we can okay. go on to that. I just want to um, make sure so I have it keyed in. Yeah, that's actually a good tie-in. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> the weird thing about a lot of these people with uh, their experiences is a lot of them see the same thing. And that, for me, is like the most terrifying thing of all. Uh, the, like the, there's two things that people see, and there's the monkey men, which is very similar to what I saw when I had mine. I so that, that sucks. <laughs> um, that really sucks. <laughs> the other one is what's described as the hat man. Yeah. So I don't the hat see man is like a yeah guy wearing a top yeah. hat generally Didn't just you like say you seen him? I know you said you seen the hat man I, I thought I thought you said that you seen him too no uh, I've seen him I uh, I guess yeah but it's not the same but that's not right. I, I I don't see him he's far away and I don't see him only in sleep paralysis generally I've a lot of people right? who have and at the corner of your eye like mm-hmm. the movie and that's generally yeah. that happens a lot mm-hmm. uh, generally with the hat man too it's like a lot uh, some of the cases too is like. You can never actually see him. He's usually a 
shadow figure, mm -hmm. but you can distinctly see you can, the top you, you can see and him. There's a lot of weird ties into, like, voodoo mythology. mythology I, oh, yeah, remember, with... Uh, Baron Samity. Yeah, yeah. Who is known for wearing a top hat. He's generally a shadow figure. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, voodoo didn't just take this out of nowhere. Like, this is something that <laughs> well, people have seen. So and me and Don together. talked about this for... Cool. Like, so, like, with... Uh, we won't say what they're called, because we're on an internet podcast. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, so they, they look like people you know. We're, and I know you know what I'm talking about. I know they the viewers. They start with an S. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> But they're, like, usually, like, figures that are, like, really... Oh, they look like normal humans, but they're a bit all elongated and stuff, right? Yeah. Which, um, there's stories like that... This was a Navajo thing, right? It's, yeah. It's, 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 or like, they could be animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the the thing with that that's interesting is, like, you were told not to go and answer your door or windows mm -hmm. when you see something like that. Mm -hmm. But And so you're like, okay, well, maybe that's just Navajo. But then you mm -hmm. look in Japan, which has similar stories, mm -hmm. but with a tall woman that comes to the window to take boys... Yeah. And there's, I've, I've there's seen... There's that, there's the black-eyed kids, yeah. you know that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, like, I, I was like, could it be aliens? Mm -hmm. Maybe. <laughs> I, like, <laughs> I like thinking things are aliens. But anyways, that wasn't the thing I want to talk about with well, the Amityville, but I... I, I wanted to, before yeah, we sorry. go on to Amityville, mm -hmm. I just wanted to say the, the only other time I've actually had sleep paralysis, it was auditory. And, uh... Yeah. Which, what's that mean? Sorry, just for my... It was just you, you all just hear hearing it. it. Oh, okay. And it was a guy yeah. shouting right behind me as oh, I was waking up. I didn't like, know that was... He was just was... shouting. Yeah. And I, I, I remember at the time I could remember what he was saying, but it was like, I, I can't remember anymore. I just woke up and there was a guy behind me shouting. Yeah. Um, I've talked to people who have had it where um, they've woken up and there's people just banging on their door. Or mm -hmm. something banging on their door, scratching at the yeah. door. Oh, I've like, had that. Yeah. I've, like, I've had all of those. That was... But I think the worst it's ever gotten was, um, I was, um, at home and I... This always happens, I don't know why, when I sleep on my stomach. It happens all the time when I mm -hmm. sleep on my stomach. And so I, my mom has this long hallway, right? And I remember looking to the door and the door was open because the door was right by the bed and I was like... I don't remember leaving that open, and then I can see stuff? this, you know, big tall guy, like, choo, and I was like, oh, fuck, like, <laughs> and then my mind and my body just start realizing, I'm like, okay, like, this is happening, like, just calm down, <laughs> and I'm like, this isn't real, and then he just starts running into the room, and I'm like, <sighs> and like, I could see, like, his, like, you know, his legs, and then something trailing behind him, mm -hmm. And then he stops, and I could just hear him breathing behind me. And I'm like, is that me breathing, or is that him breathing? And then my body just, like, sinks into the mattress. Like, he jumped right on top of me and was just, like, pushing me down. And, like, my body's just, like, going everywhere, and I'm trying to scream. <laughs> and then, like, my eyes, like, flip open, and I just, like, take the covers off mm -hmm. and, like, run out of there. But the door was closed, mm -hmm. so I had to open it to get out of the room. And I was like, okay... I knew I knew that was sleep paralysis, yeah. <laughs> but it was so like oh it was the, scary. The, the two mm -hmm. things I've so I've had a one really weird. I haven't told you this one actually because I don't remember it all the time. <laughs> um, but there was one time. It was a long time ago. It was when I was dating um, Kayla, and uh, which neither of you know, so I don't know why I dropped the name. That's probably why. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, no no. So how the story and I still get this though, where um, I was like laying there and I woke up but I couldn't move my body. And then I heard somebody at the door rattling it. Jesus. And he's like, I'm going to come in here and kill all of you. I'm going to kill every single person in this house. And so I like went up. I was like, is the door locked? She's like, yeah, I always lock the door. I'm like, you do not always lock the door. I ran up and the door was unlocked. I oh locked the door. And two seconds later, we hear knock, knock, knock and the door Stop. And I'm like, Because she lived in like one of those sketchy ass apartments. So it was legit someone at your guys' house? Yeah, I don't know. Obviously, they might not have tried to kill us, but it was but really still. fucking creepy. And it was like 2 a.m. too. Yeah, so. That could have been like one of those like... It could have just been someone trying to rob. Well, or, it's yeah. weird because I've, I've also had it where it's like um, things in real life that are happening in real life will impact your dream. Mm -hmm. And like the, the funniest one for me is I remember being a kid and my alarm went off and it was Avril Lavigne's Keep Holding On, which is a <laughs> banger of a song. But I remember in my dream I was in like a cool fight scene and that song <laughs> came on. It was my alarm to get up and it just became the soundtrack to my fight scene. 
And that's it was the <laughs> coolest dream I've ever so had. So that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's absolutely why I have that Silent Hill alarm is my thing. Because my that literally happened to me where, like, I wouldn't wake up because the song would go into the dream. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just bring it in and I'm like, yep, yeah. It makes it had... even more epic. Like, <laughs> keep holding on. I haven't had sleep paralysis in a long oh, time, yeah. though. <laughs> I, I, think, just... okay. I think actually since I've started dating you, I haven't had... Or no, since we moved in together. I've had it since I started dating you, but not since we moved in together. I haven't had sleep paralysis. Yeah. But yeah, I... I, I uh, I, I used to get it all the time. Like, it was at least once a week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and almost always accompanied by something. Either there was the chair guy. If I have a chair, like, pointing to me mm-hmm. in my room. That's why, like, if you ever go in my room, my chair is always tucked in back when my bed was there. Because if it wasn't tucked in, it would be faced towards me. It mm-hmm. would always spin towards me. And there would be a guy in the chair just, like, twitching out. Mm. Uh, and then the other was the girl. There was a little girl that would always just come up to me and just say, you're not ready. Mm-hmm. And then... I'd usually wake up. But I also know how to wake up from it now. So a lot of the times in recent sleep paralysis, I wouldn't let it get to the mm. part where I see something. I would just, like, I figured out I can move my hand just lightly. Mm. And I would just clench and poke, stab myself with my nails, and it would wake me up. Hmm. See, see, like, most people can't even do that because yeah. it's so terrifying. Yeah. Well, I've had it since, so I said it was since I was a teen, but I remember actually the first time I've ever had sleep paralysis was right around when my diopa died. And didn't you, like, talk to your dad about it or something? No. No? My Auntie Rose. Yeah, it was... Yeah, talk to me about it Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, when I was very little I can't remember when my Diopa died uh, but it was before he died no no it was after after he died but uh, there was a news report dream that was before he died but um, uh, I was laying in my bed and I woke up and there was a guy sitting on my bed corner Mm -hmm. and I couldn't really see him but he was eating potatoes which my Diopa always ate and he he did look vaguely like my Diopa and that's I I just felt like it was the only time I've had sleep paralysis that I can remember it was the first time I ever had it Mm -hmm. But I felt, like, safe. I didn't feel like what I normally feel when I have sleep paralysis. Like, scared. Yeah, it wasn't scared. It just felt nice. It was. It felt like he was kind of just saying bye. Which, to be fun, funny, I was scared of my Diopa in real life. When I was a kid, I hated <laughs> going to his house. I was super scared of him. But in that one time, I felt not scared He's of like, him. like, I won't scare him. Oh, it's the, the, the dead version of my Diopa's on my bed. Oh, thank know. God. Uh, I had a, something not, like, kind of opposite. It wasn't very nice. <laughs> I had something like that. It's not like that. (laughs) (laughs) It was kind of opposite, whereas um, I had this woman in my life, and she was so close to our family. She was so good to us, and I, like, took her as my grandma, and she died in a car accident, and it was, like, it was so sudden, and um, I really missed her, right? Like, Mm. and I just, just because she would always talk to me and give me such good advice, and then I had a dream of her, and I seen her, like, from afar, and just the way she looked, I was like, that's not her. <laughs> like, you know, the, like in my dream, even in my dream, I knew that it was like, in my head, I was like, that's, that's a demon trying to <laughs> trick me to think that I can, cause she was like motioning me to go to her. And I was like, you know, like <laughs> waving at her and we were at a concert, right? So there were so many people. So I just kept trying to get away from her and like. I was so terrified and I was so scared. Like that, that actually ties in pretty well. Not like the the point I want to make to, to that as well, and that's fascinating because I, uh, I, I name drop the the black eyed kids and stuff, and mm-hmm. I believe that that's very demonic. Mm-hmm. Um, the, but the one consistent thing you see in all cases of like things like this happening, is that demons can't actually affect your life unless you invite them in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so in a lot of these cases where this stuff is happening. In your case, that she's motioning you to come exactly. over. Exactly, and my... so the, in that in that case, like you always feel something's off, mm-hmm. and you felt that, and so you're like, I need to get out of and here. I and I was so, a kid. Yeah. Like, yeah. Even then, I was like, Whoa, no, yeah. <laughs> no thanks. And so, generally, they'll always like try and play tricks, but the the the, the black eyed kids like they. I keep thinking you're gonna say black eyed peas. I have no fucking idea why. But yeah, they show up at like the door yeah. of the of this couple. And they're like, our parents are coming to get us. Can we come in? And they're like, well, they're children, and these guys lived in a farmhouse. And I'm like, this is only one of the cases that they have. Yeah. It happened, and so they're like, yeah, come in. And all of a sudden, it's like, just weird stuff started going on until the point where they left. And uh, like a week later, the, the the husband had cancer that was like stage four. Yeah. Just like got diagnosed, and bad like just stuff, stuff happened. Happened. Some of them even like, die. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, in every case known about this, which uh, or these kids is like, they ask to be invited in, and there's a yeah. ton of like, 
demon activity and i think most possession can only happen if you actually allow the demon to come in literally they go to the most vulnerable yeah and then they make themselves they'll trick the most you. vulnerable they'll state. they'll play the part of somebody that you know mm-hmm. um or a car salesman which is similar to the navajo <laughs> belief and like in that yeah yeah they really disguise themselves yeah. Yeah. They always disguise himself, but you can always tell there's something wrong. Like exactly. they'll play the part of a, a dog, but they <coughs> don't actually know how a dog behaves. You, and you so can see you it. You can see. I it. mean, if you're aware, mm-hmm. you can see it. Yeah. Like if I, I was a demon, and this is just sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just saying, if I was a demon, I would become a hot woman, and go to a teen boy. <laughs> Oh, they wouldn't give a shit. Yeah, yeah exactly. Get so. <laughs> Want to see boobs? Like you wow. don't even have to have sex with them. Want to see I boobs? Mean, you okay. Joke about that, but I honestly think that that's like a major thing, especially in like porn okay, addictions okay. and stuff. Mm. Oh is my the, god. Yeah. Okay. I was um, just gonna. Say is that. I think that's like massively demonic, um, and it's like really messed up. So it's not. It, you joke about that, but, but it, I actually true. think that's real. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> in a different way. It's yeah. True. There's this um, story about it in the book I was reading, and. It was basically about um, these two Cree girls. Um, they went to this party, and it like kind of jumps around to this, and it's like the demon talking, and it's mm-hmm. like, oh, I could smell her. I can. I'm going. I'm gonna follow her, and he's like this big, like handsome boy. That's a frat boy, and he's like going after this native girl, who he knows has no one around and lives really far on mm-hmm. the reserve. So she's in this party, and he's just like you know, like following her around. And then the boy on the inside is like, I don't want to do this. Like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. And he's like, no, we're just going to see, like, you know, like, mm-hmm. what's going to happen. And, like, she's probably going to be alone, you know. And then she's like, go, like, she kind of notices him and she goes to talk to him. And she is like, this is off. Like, something's off here. So she kind of is avoiding him. And he's just following her. So she's on her phone, like, texting Mm-hmm. And then she's like, this part is kind of lame. Like, I'm going to go, you know. And then I'm, like, reading the book. And I'm like, no. Like, this is what he wants. And so she goes outside. And she's, like, just being super vulnerable. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, as a First Nations woman, like, you do not do that. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, you know that, you know, we have these targets on our backs. And so she goes into the woods. And is like, I'm going to take a shortcut, you know. And he's just like, yes. Like, just like a wolf. Yeah, like, so I'm- hungry. Like, <sighs> running after her. And he, like, goes into the trees, and she's standing there, and she has her sage and sweet grass, and she's like, fuck yeah, like, I, like, and her other friend's in the trees, and she has all this stuff going around him, and he's like, what are you guys doing? And they just start doing this ceremony on him, and he's just like, no, 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 like, like, I'm okay, like, I just wanted to see what's going on. Well, then they want to try to care about some plants around you. <laughs> and they're, like, you know, saying their prayer, and this ceremony and they make this demon go away and then the boy like wakes up and he's like what are you guys doing like you guys are trying to kill me like what is this like this ritual and like he's calling them freaks and all this stuff and they're like hey like we just saved you but whatever like but it's true like they literally like demons can be in the shape and form of anything to Mm -hmm. lure people and they generally target temptations too. Mm-hmm. Um, so young horny guys. Yeah. <laughs> that's generally how they attack them, and so yeah, I think that's a very. Uh, so now I'll thing. tell my Amityville thing. Oh, so, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's 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 a joke mixed with a thing I learned later that so have you guys heard that the Amityville was like an insurance fraud? I don't know the full details about it. I was gonna bring that up. But apparently it was an insurance fraud. But so I always thought it was weird. Like you watch. One, it's like Amityville Horrors one and then Pet Cemetery, which Pet Cemetery is a little bit skewed because it makes way more sense. Are you talking about the actual case or are you talking about the movie? The actual case. Okay. The actual case of Amityville Horror was, I, I haven't watched a documentary on it. Mm-hmm. I just read the fact that it was like proven to be an insurance fraud thing. I don't know how people getting killed over that was part of it, but yeah. uh, I think you have to watch it to understand. I think somebody found out and then somebody else killed them. I don't know. Anyway, it's not important to the story, but I always thought it was weird that it was like, oh, these are both things where it's like, this is an Indian burial ground. It's That's why it's bad. And then, so, in the case of the Stephen King book, which is a book anyway, so it doesn't matter, it's not an Indian ba- burial ground that's making it evil. It's the, fuck, what are they called? Wendigo. Mm-hmm. The whole, that's, so in the book, it's not the Indian burial ground, it's a You'll Wendigo. you drop Wendigo, but not the other one, eh? The other one doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I've, Wendigos, like, are, whoa, whoa. Wendigos are just Gollum. <laughs> From what I've learned from <laughs> Dead by no, 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 I know. <laughs> no, it's very, it's along the same lines. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> but no, it's uh, what's the game where they have them and they look like uh, Gollum? Until Dawn. Until Dawn, which is a really good game. 
Nice. It's, mm-hmm. uh, I don't think the Wendigos are as Maybe scary. Maybe the only game that that company has made that's any good. Yeah, true. <laughs> uh, no, because the other one's not made by them. Because mm-hmm. I was like, the the one where the werewolves isn't that bad, yeah. but it's not great. It's still not as good as that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there's like, there's a the comedian that's like, what's with all these movies that take place on Indian burial grounds and then none of the ghosts <laughs> are Native American? <laughs> it's just like what the white people push them out of the ghost place. <laughs> Even in the afterlife, it's kind of pushing us out of the <laughs> But, yeah, I just thought it was funny. I just wanted to bring that up. Because uh, the movie, I was saying, is kind of like Amityville Horror, except way faster. Like, because the big thing, we didn't talk about this, but the big thing at the end of the movie is the guy that Nicolas Cage plays, mm-hmm. back to the movie, finally, <laughs> uh, is a cobbler, right? He's a puppet. Yeah, yeah. He makes puppets. Or dolls. Dolls. Is that in which movie is it? Long legs. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he makes dolls, and he implants Satan into the dolls, mm-hmm. and then brings to the house, and essentially makes them Amityville horror. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the plot of the movie at the end yeah. of the day. Spoilers yeah. after, but it's Amityville been out for a while. Amityville is the one case where I've always been a little bit skeptical, because it did seem a little bit far-fetched for mm-hmm. what typically happens in these cases. There was um, so much. There and Ryan Reynolds is mean, I, I fully believe that a kid can go insane and murder his family. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but well, uh, wasn't that the father? No, it was a no, kid. No, it was the son oh so i've i i've watched the adult version one mm. with ryan Re- like the newer one sorry uh with ryan reynolds in it. yeah he it's the kid that kills everyone in that yeah. one? Oh no, no they live in that, in that one don't they in that one in the movies it's a remake of a family the family who moved in after yeah. the murder oh so, like ryan reynolds's yeah. family moved in after that murder god gotcha. they were like driven out with yeah after, like, and, a few months right? yeah and so, then ryan reynolds no one dies in that one right no yeah no. or like no, maybe not. like a repairman dies or something but no mm. I, i'm pretty sure nobody died unless the movies mm. change things but the actual nobody family died. that like that's occurred to mm-hmm. uh nobody died they the just weird stuff happened yeah and, like, like the babysitter got oh no one died in the original nobody case? died in the actual case no. oh well, so that makes it even more the murders sense. all happened before that family moved in but things were happening with that family that were like really messed up i don't remember any of the details but yeah eventually they're just like no something weird is happening and they all just got up and some spooky stuff they said Mm -hmm. i was gonna say um what kurt said when you said like you know when um like a whatever an entity is trying to be something else you would see it like you would you know you would know and when i was young and like you know talking about like um christianity we learned in the Bible, like, you know, like, during these dark times, things are going to come, and they're going to be in the form of something else, and that would, that was what I would always think of, because my grandma would be like, it could be in the form of, like, an animal, it could be in the form of, like, your mom, like, people you trust, and mm-hmm. I was like, oh my god, like, you know, like, then you don't trust your mom, right, yeah. we're all going to die, like, <laughs> yeah. so I talked to her, and I was like, so... I said, how, like, Blake, if it's my mom, like... Colin like, Dawn's talking how, and Kurt's talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how how am I going to know? You know, like, I just, I was like, we're done for, like, when that happens. Mm-hmm. But she was just like, no. She said, you're going to know. You'll know. Yeah. She said, because you know your mom and you know your sis- your siblings, you know us. Mm-hmm. And if you see something that's not us, you're going to know because on the inside, something's not going to be right. Mm-hmm. And literally a lot of people... Do everybody has that, mm-hmm. but most like a majority of people are suppressing that they do not listen to their intuition. Yeah, which is why this stuff happens a lot. Is like what I believe. Yeah, they're just like, oh, it'll be fine. When on the inside, you're like, eh. and even just that, you're like, you should be like, no, yeah, <laughs> like hell no, hell no. <laughs> and uh, yeah, oh, I mean, my my opinion too is like, yeah, unless you're actively involved in this kind of creepy stuff, like, um, you will know when it's, a de- a, like, a demonic attack. Mm-hmm. Um, and from a Christian, I always believe, like, I am safe, um, because I can just trust my God, mm-hmm. and, uh, like, that, that's that been, like, really important, so even with, like, sleep, sleep paralysis attacks, where I know that this is, for me, I believe very strongly this is demonic activity Mm -hmm. um i just know like i didn't accept this like this is a i knew it was wrong and i i can push it away and i knew that something was off and so and i believe that that's exactly what it is with the like demons and the, the the scariest part of them is that 
if they know all this to the point where they can impersonate somebody you know, it means that they're studying you. Yeah, they've been around. They've been around, yeah. and they, they know watching. things about your life, and that, that that's really messed up, mm. but they can't, they, they can't get everything perfect, and it's like... But they're watching. But they're also, <laughs> like, actively trying, and it's like, that is terrifying, but... <laughs> it, literally, because the, like, demons are beings that have never been on earth. Mm-hmm. They want to be here, so they'll literally do anything you need to get, to those get gorilla any living, costumes. Yeah, to get <laughs> <Gorilla> <laughs> those things. Straight up, man. And I think maybe that was like the weirdest thing about mine is that like when it happened, and I like got out of it, and I like I thought it was funny. I was like, <laughs> "What the hell was that?" Like, <laughs> um, like, but at the same time, it's like, well, maybe that's how they attacked me. Is that like they made it somewhat comedic yeah, because like, it's to like trust you because it's like now that it's funny, <laughs> I they, make make they a start light doing... situation of it, and it's like no, it it wasn't light situation. No, it's <laughs> They're gonna start scary. doing stand up in your sleep paralysis. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But... Did it have the glasses? <laughs> 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 Pulls out a mic. He's like, so what's the deal with airline food? You're like, I I hate Seinfeld stand up. <laughs> it makes me think of the ending of a uh, Monsters Inc. Where like, I know scared I mean. <laughs> Mike Wazowski is like starts doing stand up. To this kid. be funny instead. <laughs> yeah. instead of scaring the kids. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, god, that's so scary. But yeah, no, it's a, uh, it's some messed up stuff. Mm. Yeah, well, like it was, it's different. <laughs> it was mm-hmm. different. I liked it though. Uh, it, it, I feel like you guys probably feel like how I felt the first time I beat Silent Hill two. Ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, because Silent Hill two was. Like you didn't, I didn't feel like I shouldn't have watched or played Silent Hill two, but mm. I felt different. Like it, it, it's yeah. like everything changes after you play Silent Hill two the first time. Yeah, unless you get a bad ending. Uh, no, I think all the endings are applicable. So the best have, ending is the dog ending. Though. Yeah, but you have to beat the game five times to do mm-hmm. one. <laughs> um, which ending did you get in Silent Hill two when you played it the first time? Um, uh, just the, the original. There's three that you could get. Yeah. Which one of the three? Um, because there's the first time I played it, I didn't get the cannon. Ending. It was the good ending. The one where you get the little girl. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one I got too, and then I found out the canon ending is the one where he kills himself, because mm-hmm. uh, in Silent Hill, three or four, I can't remember which one, they talk about James yeah. driving his car off the bridge. Uh, yeah, I got the one where he like accepts his guilt and like what he did. He accepts the fact that he did it. And then yeah, he's okay. And then he's like, "Oh, so, this little girl's still here," and he's like, "I'll take care of her," mm-hmm. which is a it's a pretty happy ending. Um, there's a special ending. In the PlayStation Two version only, that like obviously there's a dog ending, but the Xbox version has that one as well. Mm-hmm. But there's an alien abduction ending where aliens did it all too, which is almost is the same. As, one or is that three? All of them have an alien abduction ending. Oh, yeah. Uh, every single Silent Hill except uh, up to four. I'm not sure after that have alien abduction endings. Number four was weird. Like that was the, the room. room. Yeah, yeah, because everyone said it sucked, but I actually uh, I've so, never actually played the room, but I've like seen it. Um. So the reason and I, I know the story behind it, and I was like, this is. It's actually good. Like, so it's it doesn't suck because the story's bad. Mm-hmm. It sucks because it's awful to play. That's fair. <laughs> um, and it was also like the first decline in the series. Like so. the story's good, but it's not Silent Hill three good. It's not Silent Hill two good. Yeah, and it's weird. Um, like, but I think most people felt a lot of people did like three as their favorite. But I also I think two two is the best. Two is the pinnacle. So, of the series. so it, it, in no, that, sorry, in that sense, it's like. You could say number three was technically the downfall because it wasn't as good as two. No, so, but people didn't like two when it came out. People thought two was awful. Hmm. Three got a lot, was a lot more popular when it came out because they went back to like the main look. So two's more of a, like a cult classic. Yeah, yeah. It it, it took off afterwards where, Mm -hmm. uh, because when two came out, people didn't like how when you went to the, whatever you want to call it, Dark World or whatever, Mm -hmm. it was dirty looking and stuff instead of like the bloody fleshy hell Mm -hmm. escape that you were in the other games. Um, that being said, I do like Silent Hill 2 more, but Silent Hill 3 is really powerful at the very end when she kills, like, their witch god thing, Mm. and then she just Mm. lets all of the trauma hit her at once, and she's just like, I want my dad, and just, like, breaks down. Mm -hmm. It's, it's really solid. Oh, wow. Um, Silent Hill 1, I think, is only considered good because it was the first one. (laughs) Like, it's not bad. Looking back, yeah, there wasn't anything that actually made that game super special. Yeah, it's had weird bosses, uh... I'm also, for me, it's like, two is the best because I'm just a sucker for Pyramid Head. Yeah. And that guy is just the coolest villain in games. But you, do you <laughs> like think. Silent Hill? What the fuck is the other one with Pyramid Head, even though he shouldn't be in it? He shouldn't be in it, and yeah. so I didn't like it. But <laughs> well, and that game's stupid. I, that, that game should have just been called Silent Hill the movie, the game. I know. <laughs> uh, it, I, find, I find it weird because, though, like, like it, they, they, 
And I think it's actually genius at a certain level because, like, they created something so good with Pyramid Head. But considering what they, like, who Pyramid Head is, it's like you actually just can't reuse him. And uh, I thought that was, like, both so tragic and so genius. Which at in the, the movie same time, was right? fine. The movie, most people are understandable, like the first one where they put yeah. Pyramid Head in. People are like, they needed a big bad. There's not big bads in Silent Hill. Right. Uh, for me, I think that the path they should have gone is that, like, well, you did something that good with Pyramid Head. Try something else. Uh, like, so a big problem with that was after Silent Hill 3, the creative director quit. That's fair. Yeah. Um, that's well, what and, happens a lot. Yeah. Though. And it's that's fairly... Uh, it makes sense. The only other person that I wanted... The thought would be like great at doing it. I know what say. Kojima. Yeah, Kojima. <laughs> and it's like it's such a shame that he never actually got to. Yeah. Um, because um, that game would have been fantastic, especially considering how like PT started, right? Yeah. Um, I still need to play the Castlevania game that he helped work on. Yeah. It's it's not like amazing, but Ooh. he he just helped work on it. He didn't help like make or just make the story or anything. What are your thoughts of Death Stranding? Uh, I like it, but mm-hmm. I've never finished it. <laughs> well, yeah, I've played through probably like seventy five percent of it. I have not um, got that far. <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, I I get too like I get too involved in the delivering the packages side like as a side quest, mm-hmm. and I just get locked in, and then I keep doing that until I stop playing yeah. it. For me, it's <laughs> like it, it got it, it's the most divisive game I think ever made because it's like it actually is just a delivery walking sim- simulator, yeah. um, and it's I think like you see me playing it. Maybe, yeah. But the thing is, like, I don't know if any game's atmosphere is actually as good as that game's. When when you're going from, like, area to area, like, you, you stop in an area, do all the delivery, then when you're moving to the next one, it's just, like, a full album of different songs play oh, yeah, yeah. While, while you're walking, and it's, like, the, the visuals in that game are, like, second to no game ever. Oh, yeah, it's really good. And so it's, like, when you're there, it, it's, it, gross, it's almost just, like, it's a, like... It makes sense it's gross, too. Yeah, it's, uh... When you're doing that, like nothing makes you feel like more at peace. You're just happy. You're not. It's not like intense <laughs> or anything. You're just playing a game, walking, and you're just like, I so I this wish... just hits weird. So and it's like it's the it's the game that like people like, but nobody knows really why they like. <laughs> so it. So I know like... what I don't like about it. Mm-hmm. I wish there wasn't conflict in the game. Uh, I, every time there's conflict, it's like I just want to deliver packages. I Can't know. the conflict be this cliff? <laughs> no, okay. I around, get around Depends it. on the conflict. I don't like the people be people conflict. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ghosts are fine. Yeah, the you BTs. Need something. The BTs are fantastic. Like because the cause BTs are a they something. they do add a stress to the game that's mm-hmm. actually like like really like yeah we're freaky the, like yeah where the gun guys are just bullshit like fuck mm-hmm. off why guns fuck well and also they're just <laughs> incredibly easy but they're yeah. just time consuming and so yeah. like it doesn't actually feel that rewarding to. Did you Come ever on, play like, uh, Metal Gear Solid Five? No, it's the only one I played was Metal Gear Rising. Since you like Death Stranding, you prob oh Rising, which is one of my favorite, but Isaac's least favorite. I love Rising. Yeah, Rising's Dude, so Armstrong so Armstrong is the greatest villain. Uh, so Metal Gear Rising <laughs> is the RoboCop of video games. <laughs> yeah, it is the it dumbest is. video game ever, but man, <laughs> is it fun! Dude, Armstrong, the dog. No, oh, yeah, the fucking dog. That yeah. dog. So I had to look up how to parry in that game because yeah. parrying is hard in that game. Uh, to beat that dog. I don't actually think the pairing is that difficult. I think I, it's, it's not, but it's it's weird. You have to under because I skipped the tutorial accidentally, mm-hmm. so I didn't know how to do it at all. Mm-hmm. And you need to know how to do it when you fight. And it, it's not it do, it doesn't actually like yeah, I played through the tutorial. It doesn't actually really. Yeah, no. Tell when I played you. it again, when I played it again, and you fight because it tells you kind of when you fight the samurai mm-hmm. guy. Yeah. Which did you play a DLC where you play as him? No. Apparently, it's really good. Yeah. Um, I never played it either, but like it, it's it's teaching you there. But if you fuck it up, it doesn't care. Mm-hmm. And that's how it's supposed to teach you. So, uh, but the dog, you the dog is a wall where you have to learn how to parry. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know how to parry, the dog will beat you every time. But the mm-hmm. dog's a great character. He, like, after you beat him, you reprogram him, and he's, like, your little pal. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's a great character. Uh, no, he is, like, the first, like, really t- test of parrying in that game. Uh, I had issues with that game a little bit, because uh, I found the combat, which is pretty much the entire game. Yeah. Uh, there was just problems with it, where, like, sometimes you could fight... You fight people, like, one-on-one, and there's a group of people, and you can go through all of them, and you mm-hmm. feel like a complete badass. Other times, you come in, and a guy, you, you get hit, and then a guy shoots you, and then you yeah. get hit again, and <laughs> oh, then yeah. another guy shoots you, <laughs> and you're just getting stun-locked, and you're like, dude, this sucks. And then you die, and then respawn, and then you clear them all in one shot, and you're like, 
if it was that easy, why couldn't I do it before? And it's like, uh, so like I felt there was like kind of pacing issues with the fighting that felt weird. Like, I never it just had felt any... like RNG that you walk in and it's like, how is this? I never had go? any issues. That's stuff <laughs> yeah. just because I played Metal Gear and I play a ton of character action. Mm-hmm. So the game was just something I always play. But, yeah. Uh, I also don't love the parrying system. I feel oh, like yeah, it should be a button that you hit that like parries. But up. before like, then, I don't think there was a lot of games that had parrying. Well, Arkham Batman Arkham was out, and that was how that worked. What's parrying? Parrying um, is when you te- what what parrying is is when you take a weapon and somebody swings a weapon and you push back so they like open up their guard. Oh okay. Yeah, it's, what it's pretty much just a it, like it, it's taking their attack and go. Uh, using trying to think of a game. Them. It's in like Harry they, Potter, in Harry, Harry Potter, they have that one spell you can use yeah. that, like, if you use it at the right time, it makes the enemy open up. That's yeah. essentially how a parry works in the game. Oh, games. okay. Yeah. Um, uh, the one thing that's sweet in that game, the opening Metal Gear Ray fight. Yeah. It's per- parrying is pretty much waiting for them to attack so that you can counter the attack. And oh. so it's a, it's a timing-based thing. Yeah. And then Metal Gear, it's like, okay, they can be... On all sides of you, <laughs> and when they hit you, you have to point and turn your character in yeah. that direction and then attack into them. But you're and not. That's, so- that's all the parrying is. But sometimes you, you can get attacked from both sides, and so you parry one guy, and the other guy's <laughs> just like. So to be wild. fair, so Kurt, you played <laughs> Batman, which was it's, which, technically, it's like a, it's like a character action, mm-hmm. but Batman, you can always block from all sides. Well, games. you can you can double parry. So if two people are attacking at the same time, you can like <laughs> you can tap triangle oh, the parry button parry. twice, and you'll actually parry them both. What, but so like uh, Metal Gear awesome. doesn't have that luxury. So. Yes. So, oh my god. <laughs> but a lot of those games don't. So the whole point of not point, but the 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 whole idea behind those kind of games is most of the games have stuff like that where you have to parryings aren't supposed to be easy, but if you do them properly, you can pretty much kill that guy. Okay. And where Batman is. A lot of Batman, and same with Assassin's Creed gameplay, is mm-hmm. you just want them to hit you so you can do that, and then you just, the gameplay loop goes you on. You beat on somebody mm-hmm. until, like, they show the animation of attacking, and then you parry Spider-Man them. Spider-Man, too. You, you, oh. Spider-Man, yeah, Spider-Man took the Arkham yeah. combat, yeah. which is a... Nice. I, is a good, I think, it, like, I don't know, like, I think it, it maybe didn't age super well, that type of combat. But I do like it in It's Spider-Man. not really, like, my, my favorite anymore, but, like, when the Arkham games came out, Mm-hmm. I don't think there was a better system in gaming. Like I no, just, no. I, uh, you uh, to just be fair, like, Assass- did Assassin's Creed come out first or did Arkham? Because they both had it. Uh, they were well, close. no, but they were different. They were similar, but they were they were. Yeah, different. yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying they're not saying they mm-hmm. like straight up copied each other. But uh, they're, Arkham they're, I was the first the game to have that style. It's actually called the Arkham Combat. Oh, okay. So it's a. Uh, it, it, there's a name for it, but it has Arkham in it because yeah. it's like it was invented by Arkham Asylum, um, which. For my money, is still one of the greatest games ever. Arkham Asylum is the best Arkham game. I, I really think they should. Like, They're making a new one. Are they? Yeah, they announced who's playing Batman because the guy who played him died, Kevin yeah, Costner. Kevin Costner. Uh, so. And I'm pretty sure Mark Hamill's not Joker anymore. Yeah, he he's said also he's, dead in the universe. So. He said he retired. Well, so is Batman. Batman's dead in the universe too. So. That's right. Yeah. Um, they. I don't know if they. It's gonna be in the past thing, or if mm-hmm. they're gonna like make up a way. But the Suicide Squad game is also. In that universe, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's all, all Rocksteady, right? Yeah. And I, I don't know what Rocksteady was thinking when they made Suicide Squad. Well, Gotham Knights was also bad, and that's that part wasn't, that wasn't It's not Rocksteady, Rocksteady, but it takes place in the same universe. Yes, it does, yeah. But, like, uh, I don't know. Like, Rocksteady straight up made this game that nobody asked for. <laughs> nobody really wanted, and it's a Suicide uh, no, Squad some, game. So that's where you're wrong. Yeah. Somebody did ask, Warner Brothers, because no. they said, Hey, Destiny makes money, right? Why don't we make a Destiny? <laughs> well, and that, the, but that's the most ridiculous part. It's like you're playing these characters who all have powers and like the skill sets. Or and it's like, why guns. don't we just give them all guns and make it a shooter? <laughs> Harley <laughs> Quinn, <laughs> known for her gun bat. <laughs> Captain Boomerang, known for his gun. <laughs> Who's the shark guy? Captain uh, Shark... Uh, <laughs> Uh, King Shark. Yeah. King Shark. <laughs> Runs known... around shooting people with guns. Like... <laughs> oh, my God. And I kept... The, the only guy who made sense to have a gun was Deadshot. So it was... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was like a game that nobody really wanted. And then they <laughs> took the game, and anything that cool that could have come from it, they just... took out because they just gave everyone guns. <laughs> and it's like, Rock City, what are you doing? You the Captain, the, the the Captain best... Boomerang one is the most ridiculous. Yeah. Hey, what's your name? Captain Gun. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure, like, Deadshot's not even a character in this. 
He is. No, is he? He's the fourth Playboy. Oh, is he? Yeah. Okay, he's so the he's, only one who makes yeah, sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, so, I, can, I can stretch for Harley Quinn. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, maybe Harley Quinn could use Harley a gun. Harley Quinn would use a gun. Yeah. So, but she, she prefers melee. She stuff. prefers being right, on the They pulse. all prefer melee. That's like the draw of the superhero thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't want to play Call of Duty as like... <laughs> yeah. Super Everybody. <laughs> Imagine they made a Hulk game and just gave him an AK and he's just running around. <laughs> Hulk shooting. shoot! Oh, Hulk shoot! <laughs> that would be terrible. To be fair, you know who would, what would be a cool character to play as with guns is Venom, and I know what you're saying. Venom mm-hmm. doesn't use guns. Agent Venom absolutely does, and he's fucking cool. Yeah, and you you, you wouldn't really put it past Venom to use a gun. Oh uh, no. well, depends which Venom. Like yeah. so, Eddie Brock yeah. villain would not use a gun. I think he would. Uh, but the a Venom that uses Flash Thompson's Venom mm-hmm. does, because he's a secret agent and he's really good with guns, mm-hmm. and he keeps the guns inside his body and shoots multiple guns at once, mm. which oh. is brilliant. I honestly just think, like... He's he, also a guardian. He's, he's not the most moral dude, either version, like, especially Eddie uh, Brock. Flash Thompson's is a hero. Yeah, he is, yeah, but... Uh, which is funny. Eddie was... Brock is, is, like, not the most moral person. He is an anti-hero for a reason, right? Yeah. And so it's like, yeah, he would use a gun. <laughs> so I, I just think that in the game and the reason he doesn't is because he doesn't really need to yeah and so well I use a gun and I can yeah. just stretch from across the room and yeah. grab you <laughs> yeah uh, but which if you played what did you think of Venom as, I have played uh, Spider-Man 2 oh you haven't? I haven't yeah, yeah no okay then I, won't. I want to play it but maybe that's like you own it right yeah that could be a let's play we do too oh that'd future. be good yeah uh, I would like to play it. So. It was fantastic. It takes a twist on things. Yeah, I, I think I know it, but I'll I'll keep it right. hidden just in case, so you don't confirm or deny. Thus, yep, <laughs> keeping it a secret, <laughs> keeping it safe. Uh, yeah, I I uh, was gonna say something and forgot, but I think this is a good place to end. We're at an hour ten. Like I think we could go longer, but it's been a late night. Mm-hmm. It's almost midnight here now, and it'll be one a.m. for you guys if you're watching this right as it comes out. But we have a lot of fun spook fest. There should be a new podcast every week. Hopefully with these two fine people in the room. But we'll see what happens. Obviously people are busy. So I'll try to have a guest at least every time at minimum. <laughs> we have lots of fun games to stream. And of course Signalis will be out in less than 12 hours. So you guys can watch the first episode of that. Which me and Kurt apologize. But after episode 2 there are three epi- four. four episodes of completely shit audio. <laughs> um <laughs> Hope they, unless I fix it somehow in editing, but oh, I do need to buy that editing software. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That that I do need to buy that. <laughs> Otherwise, I won't be able to edit the videos. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks everybody for watching, and we hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>